Hello Booktube, my name is Elizabeth. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Book As In Books. This video is a book haul. I recently went on a holiday in Stratford, Ontario to see a few Shakespeare plays in a musical. Um, and I decided that part of my holiday would be to bookshop. And I did that. And I had fun and I brought back a whole bunch of books and I decided that my book shopping would be in second-hand bookstores because new bookstores it, they, they all have the same thing so whether I'm shopping in a new books store in Ottawa or a new bookstore in Toronto it's all going to be the same new releases it's all going to be the same books unless I would go especially to a specialized bookstore like a bookstore that sells just mysteries or a bookstore that sells just romance but I don't think they exist that much um, so basically I decided Decided to go to second-hand bookstore because there would be more variety and I was basically guaranteed that the offering would be different from what I would find in my hometown. So that's what I did. Um, I didn't take any pictures. I'm not the sort of person who takes pictures when they go on holiday. I just don't think about it. It's just it's not something that I do. So I may look on the internet to find some pictures and if I find some interesting ones, I may post them um, and uh, just know that they're not my pictures. They're pictures that I took from the internet. Um, so without further ado, the first place where I stopped on my travels was uh, BMV. It is on Bloor Street in Toronto and it is a gigantic bookstore, uh, secondhand bookstore. Well, secondhands and remainders. And I was looking for garbage basically because I thought that secondhand bookstores would be the best place to find garbage for Garb August. However, it is not. I found out that uh, there's not that much garbage in secondhand bookstores because probably garbage doesn't sell for a high price and you have to sell too much of it and you still have to pay the rent. So I don't think it is worth it for bookstores in big cities with high uh, with high rents, with where the rents are expensive um, to sell garbage. So I didn't find any garbage. Well, that, that probably was in the horror section and the science fiction section, but I don't know these sections and I don't care for them. So it, it, they didn't have the sort of garbage I like. That would be romance garbage and something like that. So uh, instead, I ended up being completely fascinated by the poetry section in that bookstore. I don't know why. It was a very small section compared to the rest, but it's the one that caught my interest. I found this book. Uh, it's the collection of Emily Bronte's poems in this beautiful little Every Man's Library's pocket, Every Man's Library pocket poets. Um, and it, the, the, um, how do you call it? The, the, the paper on top is uh, covered with um, the, the dust jacket. There we go. The dust jacket is covered with this plastic cover and it looks like it, it looks brand new. It looks like nobody used it and there's no remainder mark or anything. So it's just a total bargain. And then I also found Gilgamesh into copies, uh, two different translations. So this one is a, narrat a verse narrative by Herbert Mason. And this one is by Stephen Mitchell. And yeah, I decided to buy them both because of course I, I had never read Gilgamesh before, um, before buying them. I have already read them. Um, but when I bought them, I had never read Gilgamesh, so I wouldn't be able to say which one is better. And they were so cheap. One was $7, the other one $9, and they were remainders. So they, they were new copies. And uh, yeah, I decided to buy Gilgamesh. And I also found a poet poetry handbook, because uh, when I read introductions about poetry, I don't always understand the vocabulary, and this is a bit of a dictionary of poetic terms. So uh, I already used it a couple of times. It's not the sort of book I will read from cover to cover. I will. It's a reference book, obviously, uh, but uh, I found it already quite handy uh, when I had to look for an anapest. Now I know what it is, but I forgot, but I can check it again. So that's what I found at the first bookstore. At the second bookstore, it was Seekers Books. And this one is uh, in a basement. It's just a few doors away from BMV. It's on Bloor Street 2 in Toronto. And it's in a basement. And if you don't know it's there, you may easily miss it. And once you're in there, it has really the atmosphere of a used bookstore with uh, shelves all the way to the ceiling. And um, it, I don't know, it has the atmosphere. Oh, there's a cat also. So it really is an atmosphere of a secondhand bookstore. And I found a whole bunch of things in pristine conditions. Um, so 
first one that I found, I was still in a, a classic smooth, I guess, Pandora's Jar by Natalie Haynes. I've heard so many good things about it uh, from uh, Lindy, from Lindy Magpie, Lindy's Magpie Reads, and from uh, Jack at Spread Book Joy, and probably others that I don't remember at the moment, but it sounds really awesome. Uh, it is nonfiction. It's about women in... Um, mythical in mythology i guess and it's sort of giving them back their name because sometimes their reputation has been tarnished over time just because they were women and natalie haynes decides to set the record straight about them i also found just in time for jane austen july an absolute pristine condition copy of pride and prejudice in penguin classic believe it or not this is my very first black spine penguin classic i don't have any black Penguin classics in that uh, in that edition in that format. I don't have any, and my first one is Pride and Prejudice, which is one of my favorite books of all time, and it is in just perfect condition. So I guess somebody received it as a gift and did not like it or does not read it all and decided to sell it at the used bookstore, and that makes me happy. I also found a copy of a book that I read in May. I read it in the electronic version and I wanted a hard copy. And this is The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton and it is the Norton Critical Edition. And that's the bill that is sticking out. It is not a bookmark. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I found this once again in very good condition, almost new, nothing written in it. It's just beautiful. And I'm very happy to add that to my shelves. And finally, Salman Rushdie, uh, The Enchantress of Florence. I have never read any Salman Rushdie. Um, I know that his two biggest works, or the better known ones, are Mid Midnight's Children and The Satanic Verses. And for some reason, I'm a bit apprehensive of starting reading Rushdie with one of these two books. I prefer to use a side door. I don't know why. Uh, but apparently this is going to be my side door because I found it for a bargain for for um almost nothing eight dollars and it's new uh, it's a remainder so uh, nobody's read it before so it's just awesome and then okay then i left toronto it was time to move on to stratford and stratford there were no used bookstores at least none that i found i found a little free library and i took one uh her royal spinous by Riz bowen so this is a cozy mystery if i judge the book by the cover i think i can and then um what they have in stratford is a used uh, not a used a new book bookstore uh which is called fanfare books and they also have the gift shop near the theater um and so so that means that i bought new books uh at these two places i can't really remember which is wh which i bought where I was still in the mood for classics. So, of course, they have a lot of Shakespeare. They have a whole bunch of stuff about Shakespeare, but they have other stuff, too. And I was in the mood for classics, so I bought the Greek plays. Uh, 16 plays by Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides. Um, I'm sorry if I don't, I'm not pronouncing this correctly. I know how to pronounce the names in French, so that would be Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides. Uh, and they are new translations. So we have two names on the cover, but it's not just them. Um, they, they, there are translations by Emily Wilson who translated the Odyssey and by um, okay that's the only name I remembered uh, by James Rom by Sarah Rudden Rudin I'm not sure how to pronounce that name by Frank Nizitish by Mary Lefkowitz um, uh, Rachel Kitzinger and Emily Wilson so a whole team of translators new translations for 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 these plays that I'm very eager to read. And of course, I had to buy something related to Shakespeare. I could not not buy anything related to Shakespeare. So I bought stories from Shakespeare. Um, I thought it was, I don't know why. So sometimes I read the back cover and I read it wrong and I'm completely misled uh, by my own fault. Entirely my fault. Um, I thought it was some sort of retelling like the plays of Shakespeare done in short stories. But that's not it at all. It's simply a summary of each of Shakespeare's play. So um, not uninteresting, but I wonder how useful it is once you have read the plays. Uh, so perhaps for a student who is supposed to read the plays and does not want to read them and wants just a summary of it, 
so yeah, so so that one, I'm uh, not sure how useful it will be. This one, I hope, is going to be super interesting. This is the new Cambridge Companion to Shakespeare. So it's a collection of essays by different scholars about different aspects of Shakespeare. So um, we have... Um, we have the traces of Shakespeare's life, so a bit of a biography, uh, Shakespeare the poet, Shakespeare in language, and of course the separate his comedies, his tragedies, his histories, uh, Shakespeare on the stage, Shakespeare sexuality and gender, Shakespeare and race, uh, Shakespeare in pop culture, and a oh, bunch of things like that. So about 20, 20 something essays in there. Uh, sounds really interesting. And I also bought this t-shirt. Now I'm going to be rude, I'm going to show you my chest. But it's, um, it's the plays of Shakespeare in sort of cartoonish. Um, I, I'm going to insert a picture at the end if you want to play because it's not obvious. I think that I went to see this play that would be all's well that ends well, supposing that she's giving him a ring. I think, I'm not sure. That's the other thing that I bought in Stratford. And then on my way back from Stratford, I stopped in Peterborough. Uh, Peterborough is a small town. It's an average, average size town. I think it's about 80,000 people, maybe 90,000 people. Uh, Mid-sized town for Ontario. And they had three used bookstores in downtown within a few blocks of one another. Uh, two of them were like a few doors from one another, less than one block. Um, it was really fun just to walk in that town and just take a little break because it's almost exactly halfway between Stratford and, and Ottawa. So it was just the perfect place to stop. And I bought books. So um, the I don't remember in which order. So in that bookstore, this one is, I don't know how to pronounce it. Not a new, or is it a silent K? Not a new bookstore. Um, there was potentially a lot of garbage, potentially. And for once it was, non-sexist garbage because in most used bookstores you will never find any romance or you maybe will find like a bit of Nora Roberts or a Debbie Maycomber but you will not find a wall of romance like you will find a wall of mysteries or a wall of horror or science fiction but in that bookstore they did um it, it was it, it was great um so, so so they had tons of paperbacks and among the paperbacks I found a Tarzan now, does that count as garbage or not? Um, a lot of people will say that it doesn't. I, I don't know. The first four Tarzans definitely are not garbage. I think they are wonderful. Um, but as the series stretches on, it's obvious that Edgar Rice Burroughs is writing them for the money. Um, and s some of them, they're quite... Uh, un not necessarily uninteresting, but it's just uh, it's just not the same thing as the first four books. I'm thinking, I haven't read them all. Uh, I'm thinking of, which one is it? It's with the Ant-Man, Tarzan and the Ant-Man. Uh, yeah, I remember thinking that one was not really good. So if this one is not garbage, if it's not for Garb August, then it will be for Adventure August, which is another readathon that is going on in March. Um, oh. By the way, if I mention a readathon, I will leave links in the description box uh, so that you can click on the announcements if you don't know what they are. Uh, so Garb August is obviously a month dedicated to garbage. And uh, the adventure readathon was announced by Mark from Book Time with Elvis and Sean D. Stanfast. So it will suit for either one of the readathons. So if it's not one, it's the other and perhaps both. And I also found a Georgia Tire to, to add to my collection. I already have quite a few of them unread. I think I still have six or seven unread. So that's another one and apparently a very good one too. So I'm very happy I found that. And at a different bookstore, it's fun when they leave the bookmark by the books, by the books. Oh, I bought books at by the books. <laughs> uh, I found two Contemporary fiction, I guess. Well, one of them is historical fiction. So Return of the Trickster by Eden Robinson. Uh, this is the third volume in her Trickster trilogy. I read the first one a couple of years ago and I read the second one in February or March. So I'm ready for the third one now. And I also found the second volume of another trilogy that is, of course, the Cromwell trilogy of Hilary Mantel. And this is Bringing Up the Bodies. No, Bring Up the Bodies. It's the second volume. I've read the first one when it came out. That was, I think, in 2010, and it's been a while. Um, I would need to reread the first one before I start this second one. So it's there now, whenever I'm ready for it. And the last place where I stopped um, in Peterborough was at a place called Mark 
Jokinen's books. And it is, it is the sort of used books store uh, that you see in the movies. Shelves from the, the floor to the ceiling overflowing with books, piles of books everywhere to the point that it's difficult to walk, to the point that some of the books are completely hidden and you don't really have access to them. And I kept thinking, I hope the fire department doesn't come for an ex inspection because they will just close the place. Um, this is just the, there's that many books. Well, if not close the place, just give it an, a warning to say just clear the floors because th this is this is dangerous. Uh, but I I had a whole lot of fun just exploring the shelves of that bookstore, and there was a special going on that is permanent. So if you're ever in the region of Peterborough, you may stop there, and it's three for two. So you buy three books and you pay the two most expensive, and the least expensive is free. So I bought six, and per perhaps I should say uh, he grouped together the three more expensive. So I bought three books at twenty dollars each. So I had one of them that was free, and then the three least expensive books together. So it was not the two cheapest books that were free. It was uh, the, the third most expensive and the, the cheapest. So it's a really good deal. Just stop by there if you have a chance and there really are a whole lot of books. So what did I buy there? Again, I was in the mood for classics apparently. I found Anthony Trollope by Chester Towers. That will be great for Victober. Uh, I found Robert Graves, King Jesus. That is a historical novel. Um, it's a novelization, I guess, of the life of Jesus, which was quite controversial, I think, at the time. I don't know in which year it came out. Uh, when was the original publication? First published in 1946. So, yeah, I can imagine that in 1946 it was quite controversial, especially that Robert Graves uh, quite publicly said that he had lost faith in God during World War I and was basically an atheist. So, yeah, that, 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 that promises... Uh, yeah, it, it promises to be very interesting. The Homeric Hymns, uh, that's another one that I've already read. Uh, I am in the mood for classics. So th these are hymns, so sort of odes, poems dedicated to various gods. And they were attributed to Homer. Now, of course, we don't think nowadays that Homer is a single person. It's probably just a current, I guess, a literary trend or something like that. It's a, um, it, So they were attributed to Homer, but Obviously, they were not written at the same time as the Iliad and the Odyssey, but yeah, I thought it would be fun. Yeah, because the back cover says most people are familiar, at least by repute, with the two great epics of Homer, the Iliad and the Odyssey, but few are aware that other poems survive that were attributed to Homer in ancient times. And I thought, hey, that's me, so I decided to buy it, and I read it, and it was. Yeah, uh, I'll talk about it in a later video. I also bought for Jane Austen July. Death Comes to Pemberley by P.D. James. Um, as you can see, it, it looks like it's unread. Uh, there's a remainder mark, so perhaps it was brought to the bookstore like that. I don't know. I've never read it. I've seen the television adaptation uh, with... Uh, I don't remember who plays Elizabeth Bennet or who plays Mr. Darcy, but I know that it's Matthew Good who plays Wickham. So, um, yeah, I've seen the adaptation, but I've never read the book. So, I've got this. Also for Adventure uh, August, I got The Extraordinary Voyage of Captain James Cook by Nicholas Thomas. Uh, once again, with a dust jacket that is covered in this beautiful plastic thing, and it looks absolutely pristine and unread. Uh, though there's a, I think it's this one. Is it this one that has a sticker? No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's belonged to a Dr. T.E. Courier. Uh, on Charlotte Street in Peterborough. <laughs> so, yeah, I have Mr. Mr. and Mrs., I don't know, I have Dr. Courier's book now. And the last book that I found is by an author that I absolutely love. It is Ross King, Mad Enchantment. And this is a book about uh, Monet, the painter Monet, and uh, the water lilies. And um, I read a few books by Ross King. He wrote uh, Michelangelo and the Pope's Ceiling, Leonardo's Last Supper, and Brunelleschi's Dome. So three books about artists from Florence uh, in the Renaissance. And he talks about these artists in general, but more particularly in relation to the work. So for example, in Michelangelo and the Pope's Ceiling, he talks strictly about the creation of the uh, ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Um, and uh, 
Michelangelo's life at that time. So it's not a biography of Michelangelo, it's really about the painting of the ceiling. So this, I guess, will be, will follow a similar pattern, I guess, and just follow Monet while he's painting the water lilies. And it's a beautiful book. Uh, there, there, there are pictures inside and there's also colored pictures somewhere. Okay, with the deckled edges, they're hard to find. Oh, there they were. Um, but anyway, it's a beautiful book. Once again, it looks brand new. And yeah, I got this for a song. Well, $20. I think it's a song for such a beautiful book that I'm going to keep for a long, long time. So these are the books that I bought and I'm going to have a little bit of extra because uh, when I came back to Ottawa, apparently I was not quite satisfied with my haul because I went to book shopping there too. And I took some books from little free libraries. Um, and yeah, because I still have a bit Garb August in mind. I, as you can see, of everything that I bought on my travels, not a lot fits Garb August. In fact, just perhaps maybe one, maybe two, if we, perhaps a little mystery in the little Tarzan, and that's pretty much it. It's, and they're not really that much of a garbage. So uh, I decided to find some garbage, and I did find some garbage. So I found <laughs> Barbara Cartland, The Duke and the Preacher's Daughter, in French. Um, yeah, that, 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 that is going to be good garbage for Garb August. And I also found in the little free library, Daniel Steele. Steel, the Affair. I've never read a Daniel Steele, so I hope I'm not insulting anyone when I say it's garbage, but I think it, I think it's the sort of book that is uh, that is supposed to be targeted by Garb August. So, yeah, The Affair by Daniel Steele. And I couldn't help it. I also bought a couple of classics. This one is The Silence of the Sea by Vercors. Uh, this was published during World War II in a very clandestine manner. Um, the, so Vercors is obviously a pseudonym. I forgot the, the author's name. I think his name was Brunner. Um, and he was half Jewish, so he had to hide. He was part of the resistance. And he is the founder of the publication, publication house, uh, publishing house, um, Les Editions de Minuit. So that, that's basically, uh, so th this is this great work, I guess. Uh, it's about the occupation. It's about German, Germans and friends. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a collection of short stories. And this is, oh, I just checked the title before starting filming this movie. I think it's The Last Estate. That's the translation in English, The Last Estate uh, by Alain, Alain Fournier. Um, and this is a classic uh, in French, and I've never read it, so I have no idea what it's about. Um, yeah, I guess it's about the last estate. I have no idea, and there's nothing in the back to tell me about it. So, yeah, I don't know. And also in a little free library, I found Boy in Blue Hammock, a novel by Darren Goth. Um, I... This is a dystopia. I don't necessarily like dystopias, but... Uh, yeah, I have a friend who periodically tastes food he doesn't like just to make sure he still doesn't like them. So I think I, I, I do that sometimes with books. Okay, I'm not really a fan of dystopias, but it's not bad to read one once in a while just in case. Just to check. Perhaps I could like some. And anyway, it's in the little free library, so it doesn't cost me anything. If after a few pages I don't like it, I just bring it back to the little free library and that's that. So, that is it. That is my big, gigantic book haul uh, of the last few days. Um, yeah, I hope you had fun. Uh, this, it, I think, th this very eclectic book haul, uh, because it's really all over the place, ancient classics and mysteries and classics from the 19th century and non-fiction and modern books and I think it's representative of what I read. So if you're new to my channel, I think that gives you a good idea of the sort of books you will see on my channel. So, um, yeah, let me know if you've read any of these books and what you think of them, if they're any good, if there's garbage in there, <laughs> or if the if the garbage should be classics. Anyway, let me know what you think. And thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine!